Welcome to the National Geographic Explorer on our expedition to Antarctica. For the next 10 days, we'll be exploring one of the most remote and fascinating places on the planet. We'll be doing it on style, with the kayaks, Zodiac cruises, hiking, and of course, we're gonna use the ship. We're starting our expedition in the southernmost city in South America, Ushuaia. To get to Antarctica, we will have to cross the Dry Passage. This time, we have such favorable conditions. And we made it in no time, such that we had an extra day in Antarctica. When one travels here, we think about the wildlife that this area has. The penguins, of course. But then, you get to realize the amazing human history, the landscape. It all comes together, creating one of the most fascinating places that I have ever, and that anybody has ever been. I'm sure we're gonna have an incredible experience together. And we're so looking forward to explore this amazing landscape on board for you. And once again, welcome to the National Geographic Explorer. Passage. <laughs> Good morning. The Drake Passage was kind to us. We had a rather smooth sail, and finally, we're here in the South Shetland Islands on an island called Barrientos. When you first step ashore, your senses are just overloaded. The sight of all these penguins and the smells, it fills the senses. It's really quite an experience. We're just off the northern part of the peninsula, so it's a little surprising to see some green. Where the snow is melted, you can see mosses and algae, and the geology is really interesting too. It's easy to see the volcanic nature of the region. There's some columnar basalt, and it's really striking. It's very pretty. And then, of course, the penguins themselves. Barrientos Island is home to two species of penguins the gentoo and the chinstrap. Some of them, maybe all of them now, have nests, little nests of rocks, sitting on eggs. It's music to my ears, you know. I've been dreaming of this moment forever, and I'm enjoying it. I almost am forgetting to take photos. I'm just listening and taking it all in. It's just wonderful. But really, the noises and the smells and watching the penguins, this is just a great introduction to everything that Antarctica has to offer. Feels like we're on a completely different planet. Chinstrap penguins are one of the three species of brush-tailed penguins that we have the fortune of finding here on the Antarctic Peninsula. And the chinstraps are the smallest of the three brush-tailed penguins. The chinstrap in particular has a very distinctive call. Occasionally they end up being in a quite a raucous They're quite characters in where they choose to nest. Their colonies are located on the highest ridges of these islands. That's the areas that are most exposed and less likely to have the deepest accumulations of snow. And the birds that we're seeing here are likely on eggs. All of their life's energy are now focused on taking care of these eggs. And then of course, raising the chicks and feeding them for the remainder of the season here in Antarctica. 
And though their populations are declining, our landing here at Half Moon Island has provided us the opportunity to visit an intact chinstrap penguin colony. And just by chance, our first day in Antarctica happens to be International Antarctica Day. So what a better way to celebrate than being surrounded by the beauty, the pristineness of Antarctica, and these incredible animals that call this place home for the summertime. Absolutely majestic. We've got gorgeous blue skies, the sun's out. The animals are very active today and the landscape is just next to nothing. A picture or a camera can't capture it. We're in the Weddell Sea today under relatively moody conditions. It's somewhat foggy, but it's actually creating a pretty incredible environment because as we move along, we are seeing and then losing sight of an iceberg called A68A. This is a massive tabular iceberg which is broken off from the Larsen Sea ice shelf. This iceberg started off on land as snowflakes and throughout the centuries has moved down to sea level where it has broken off and now drifted to where we are right now. This piece of ice is 86 miles long by 25 miles wide. It sits about 120 feet above the water surface and then beneath the water surface, there's about five times that amount. Very few people on the planet will ever have the chance of going along a piece of ice this long. And we're fortunate enough to have been able to spend the morning doing just that. We are only a few miles away from the northernmost emperor penguin colony on the planet. And the only reason we've been able to get here is because this piece of ice is blocking all the flow of sea ice from the south, from the Weddell Sea. And what that's allowed us to do is come across the path of emperor penguins. We have seen five to six emperors. This is the biggest of the penguins. They can be up to 120 centimeters high and then they can be up to 40 kilograms, which is 80 pounds. It's pretty impressive. They are one of the most rare penguins that we are ever, ever going to see in Antarctica because they breed the farthest south that we normally go to. This penguin has like a unique breeding cycle. They breed during the Antarctic winter. So these animals spend the whole winter in the middle of the freezing cold Antarctica. So they are truly unique creatures. But there is a few things that make us more excited than emperor penguins, so everyone was out here trying to enjoy them. So it has been a very interesting and unique morning. We all have enjoyed very much. Watching the ice break and just crack was phenomenal. And even watching the penguins as we were going through, as they're running as fast as they can, waddling and jumping into the water, it was beyond good. I could do this all day, watching the ice break.
reason that we come to the east side of the Antarctic Peninsula into the Weddell Sea is because things are very different on this side. But the big surprise today amongst the ice flows is that we got to see type B killer whales. So here in Antarctica, there are five ecotypes of killer whales, and they all specialize in different things. B1s are specialists in pinnipeds. They're looking to find seals on ice flows. So type B killer whales are very, very unique. A lot of the skin of the killer whales was covered in diatoms and algae, and it gives it a yellow cast. They have this lovely three-tone kind of gray, so they're more gray and white and then a huge, huge eye patch. It's not very often we get to see killer whales working the leads between the ice to come up to take their breath. And of course, they're checking out the edges of the ice. They're looking for something that they can wave wash. We didn't get to see the wave wash, but we got to see the killer whales looking for the seals. Killer whales work together in groups. They are highly, highly intelligent. They're in all oceans and most seas. But here, our killer whales are looking for seals on ice. So, big bees amongst the ice, right here in the Weddell Sea. Ah, oh, very exciting. I think it's always good to see the apex predator of any uh, region, and uh, it was a highlight of the trip to see the killer whales there. Large pod, just cruising, comfortable, just looking at the world and figuring out, I guess, where their next meal's coming from. <laughs> So I think it was fantastic to see them around the pack ice. We are here at Paulette Island on a beautiful early summer day. Light snowfall. And where we're visiting today is the largest penguin colony we'll have the good fortune to visit. There's roughly around 100,000 pairs of Adelie penguins here at Pollard Island. And if you do the math, that's 200,000 penguins. talking about 100,000 nesting pairs of birds. The day-to-day -day comings and going from a place like Pollard Island can be quite overwhelming. And the strategy is the more the merrier, safety in numbers. The birds that we see here on land, these birds here are mostly males tending to eggs while the female's out rejuvenating her stores. When the chicks hatch here, you'll have upwards around a half a million penguins occupying this island. And the Adelie penguin, as a species, is one of the true Antarctic penguins, along with the emperor penguin. These birds never leave the Antarctic ecosystem. They stay below 60 degrees south, and primarily they're associated with the ice edge of sea ice that forms here in Antarctica. They have a distinctive eye ring, dark head, white belly. When they get excited, their head feathers makes this little ridge. The Adelie penguin, I like to describe them as sort of the polar gentlemen and ladies of the Antarctic. And to me, they're one of the most remarkable birds on the planet. Here on Palette Island, we've got this amazing stone hut. And this is a remnant of the most remarkable story of survival. This Swedish expedition planned to drop six scientists for one winter. But in 1903, there was a second totally unplanned, unprepared overwintering. The ship, the Antarctic, got caught in the ice and eventually the ship sank. And so you end up in this small hut behind me. 20 men and a cat spending the entire winter hoping that they would be eventually rescued by somebody. They collected penguins, seals, whatever fish they could get. One of the amazing things is that nobody despaired. 
everybody set about preparing, optimistic and hopeful that they would also be eventually rescued by the outside world. They were here for almost 10 months before they were rescued. So it's a great story of human resourcefulness. think about penguins, they have an intrinsic quality to them that we humans find endearing. They walk upright, they're bipedal, they shuffle around and they have a sort of cuteness about them that we find endearing. But the penguins that we see here in Antarctica, they are really achieving something that humans would never be able to do. They live every single day of their life in Antarctic waters. It is not an easy place to call home. Their lives here on a day-to-day -day basis is truly a struggle. Starting 50 million years ago, they've adapted more or less the perfect set of tools for their life at sea. They have an impenetrable suit of feathers, 100% waterproof, incredibly well insulated. They can spend hours, days, weeks on end in the open ocean here in the Antarctic feeding, where even fully clothed, we would start to succumb to that water and perish. And then penguins, they have to nest on land, walking back and forth to their nesting sites, incubating their eggs, rearing their chicks on land, and then back to the water they go. When these juvenile fledgling go out to the ocean, Less than half of them are going to make it. And this is all taking place in one of the harshest climates on the planet. No matter how you look at these animals, just know that the penguins that call Antarctica home are darn tough. It's astonishing. I think maybe there are some lessons for us to be learned, even though I know they live such a hard life, and I know their survival is hard, but they figured out so many things about community. That's what I noticed today. I especially love that the dads sit on the nests while the moms go out and feed and vice versa, and then they take turns and they've got it all figured out. The fact that they keep coming back home to this community, it was inspiring. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Sierra Cove, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. So the game plan is basically to look for ice, looking for beautiful shapes, formations, and then we'll see what else pops up along the way. So I would just say sit back, relax, keep your hands and feet inside the boat at all times, and just take in the beauty of all these shapes. That was a cool sound. So these guys, they're pretty social animals. They're obviously not too concerned about us. Right now what they're doing is they're just preening. And sometimes they're just trying to clean off 
But other times, and you see their feathers somewhat ruffled, they're actually trying to get air in between the outer layer of feathers and the inner layer of feathers, because that is where they get their buoyancy. Antarctica, on average, is the coldest, it's the driest, it has all these superlatives. And all the snow that piles up and gets compressed into glacial ice flows down to lower elevations, hits the ocean, and then breaks off, forming an iceberg. But it's been about 30 million years since the first snowflake have started to fall in this part of the world. So to go from snowflake to an iceberg could take tens, perhaps even hundreds of thousands of years. So it takes about 60 feet of snow to compress that bottom layer into glacial ice. In Antarctica, you're getting two inches of dry snow throughout the entire year. To get to 60 feet takes a lot longer. And then the distance that it has to travel um, also adds to that life history of a snowflake. So we've seen some tabular icebergs, but they're so angular. And they're angular because water hasn't had a chance to sculpt them yet. When pieces break off and start floating around the continent, if they do so for long enough, then you're left with something like this. to another exceptional spot along the west coast of the peninsula. We are at Amarante Base Brown, which is an Argentine station, first built in 1951. It experienced a bit of a tragic fire in 1984 when its base leader wasn't really interested in spending the winter. And so he decided he would burn the base down in hopes that the government would remove him which they did. He was taken to the Palmer Station and then returned to Argentina and was put in jail. This area is called Paradise Harbor. A day like today, it certainly feels like paradise. That place name was left behind by the whalers. 
and it's undetermined whether they called it paradise because of a fine day such as today or because of the abundance of whales. It is our second continental landing on this trip, and so that does make this landing special. So the last day of our expedition, and conditions couldn't be more perfect. Beautiful blue skies surrounded in snow-capped mountains. And we're being hosted by the Chilean military at the Gonzales Videla base in Paradise Bay. There are 15 military folks here keeping the base open in the summertime. We've got 10 guys from the Air Force, five guys from the Army. And they are showing us around their base. So in this particular Gen 2 colony at the base, we've got a really rare penguin sighting. We have a leucistic Gen 2 penguin. And leucism is a lack of melanin, a lack of pigment in your skin. It's not an albino penguin, it's an all white penguin. This happens in one in hundreds of thousands of penguins. It's very, very rare. And it's right here in the base on full display. It's with its partner who is normally colored. In fact, Dentu penguins are everywhere. And what a great way to spend our last morning surrounded in the sounds, the sights, and yes, the smells of penguins. Here we are in our last day of our expedition. We have experienced this amazing location on the planet, and thinking in retrospective, it has been a great week exploring this fascinating place. We hope that this trip has not only given you amazing pictures, but also the opportunity to understand much better the world that we're living on. And now that you've been here, you are an ambassador of Antarctica. Thank you so much for traveling with us. And we're looking forward to see you in another part of the world.